Contextually, there was false teaching. Everyone say false teaching. What is false teaching? Teaching that's not based on truth. It sounds good, but it ain't truth. There's many ways to God that sound good. False. The Bible says that there's only one way through Christ Jesus. He is the door. You can be saved. Just say a prayer and you'll be in the kingdom of heaven. No, the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there could be no remitting of sins. You must repent and turn away from your sin. You must acknowledge and turn. The word metanoia, that's what repent means. In the Greek, metanoia means to change the way you think. I'm saved. I'm converted. Well, that, where's the fruit? Why well, we got to tell you to do Christian things all the time if you say? I question your something. Come on, we got a lot of false conversions out here. People that claim to be real believers of Christ, but there's no fruit and evidence in their life. Amen. Well, God is still working on me. God is, you know, I, I, I got my, my issues. No, it's, it's a sin, and you need to put a name on it, and you need to get delivered and start walking with God for real. Come on, if you're going to be in the world, go out in the world. Be, a, be the best sinner you can be. That's what my grandma told me. Listen, if you're going to go out, be the best sinner you can be. You better do it all. But if you come into the kingdom, you better give your all in the kingdom. You can't, what do you call it? Straddle the fence. In church on Sunday, in the club on Friday. In church on Sunday, got the Bible in your house, and then you got your Hennessy and Chardonnay on, on, on the counter. Well, you know, God, he knows my heart. Brother, listen, you making us look bad out here. We trying to live for God and do what's right. And here it is. You know you. See, some people, they know what they're doing. They be trying to fool God, but they're not fooling God. They trying to fool the pastor. You know, the reality is they don't want God. Because people who have not been convicted in their hearts to change their ways, they need to labor in the word until they feel that conviction. Because otherwise, they will not be saved. It's kind of like somebody trying to give themselves a, a bath with their clothes on. It's an inside job. You have to have your heart renewed and have your heart touched and get your spirit regenerated. Because that's what happens when Christ comes in, he changes your nature. Amen. You become a new nature, Corinthians. And when you become a new cre uh, uh, creation, what happens is now your spirit is regenerated and now your desires change. Amen. You desire to read the word. You desire to spend time in the presence of God. You know, that's that, that loving devotion that God puts in your spirit. You know, and oftentimes people who have not been converted, we want to bring them to church and we hope that the pastor preach a good sermon. Listen, when you meet people in the streets, do not invite them to church. Invite them to Jesus right there where you are. Come on, brother. Jesus is right here. Come on. The Holy Spirit is present. What do you need? God want to move you right now. Walmart, aisle nine. Let's go. Come on, QT, brother. What do you need a miracle? Lord, right now in Jesus' name, I pray healing in Jesus' name. Come on, 30 seconds. You got to pray a five-minute prayer. Give them 30 seconds. Give them 15 seconds of power. Holy Spirit, come right now. Touch Gina. Heal her legs now in Jesus' name. Oh, my gosh. I'm being healed. Yes, that's the call, the power of the Holy Ghost. That's you. That's how God wanted you. I was in North Park Mall, which is a mall in Dallas, Pastor Conley. In, it's kind of in a wealthy area. And there was this lady. She had this shaking her hand was shaking, her head was shaking. And I was with some friends, and they were in the cosmetic section. You know, I was just, they told me to meet them there, so I, that's where I met them in that section. You know, I was ready to get out because, you know, when women get in the cosmetic section, they want to try everything, right? It's perfumes and getting their beauty products. So this lady's walking by, so I'm kind of ready to get out and go into the mall, and she's walking by, and I said, ma'am, you know, Listen, you can address people in a loving, welcoming way, okay? You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to frantic, you know, make them afraid. You say, excuse me, ma'am, and we in Texas, so people are open. If we was in New York or Philly or somewhere, people look at you like you're crazy. Like, what you want? You say, I said, ma'am, I said, I see that your hand is shaking. I said, what is the name of your condition? She told me, and I said, ma'am, 
can I pray for you right now for God to heal you? She said, yes. And mostly, if you ask in a polite way, they'll be open. So I didn't invade her space. And I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this condition. And I command right now her body to be healed. And all of a sudden, I waited for the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, come. Do what only you can do right now. And all of a sudden, it stopped. And she looked. And she says, how much is it? I said, how much is it? I said, I said, lady, it's free. The Bible says, freely receive, freely you give. I said, Jesus Christ died for your sins, but he also died for you to be healed. And you're experiencing his love because he loves you. He's a good father. He's a good father, and he's showing you how much he loves you, that he's healing you of your condition. And I said, God bless you, and I'm, I left. Establishing the kingdom of God. That's all we're supposed to do. And you got that same power inside of you guys. And I feel like that's my assignment today, to, to, to activate not only the love and passion, but to activate certain things that may have been dead inside of you right now. When was the last time that you labored with somebody in prayer for them to get delivered? Because sometimes it's going to take more than five minutes. Sometimes you don't have to sacrifice you doing your routine for the sake of a soul that needs to encounter the love of Christ. And if you're willing to go on this journey, can I tell you, God will send floods of people to you. God will allow you to win your friends, young people. God will allow you to win your block. Come on, when the last time you prayed for your crazy neighbor? When the last time you prayed for your crazy uncle who always asking for money every time you talk to him? When, you, when, when was the last time you prayed for Shanene and Bumkisha? When was the last time that you said, hey, I'm going to take you out to lunch? Be ready. I'm going to take you out. I just want to show some love to you. I don't want to preach to you. I just want to love on you. Amen. Planting the seed. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's somebody coming behind you. Maybe it's you just opening her heart, and then somebody next, next week come and went her to the Lord. When was the last time you prayed for your, your boss? Amen. Amen. Guys, I'm telling you, there's no limits in the kingdom. Amen. And when your heart is right, mm -hmm. all things are possible. Ah, I feel like God just wanted to take you guys to just a new faith level beyond this roof. Amen. Because now is the time. Amen. You know, I'll say this and I'm closing if you have on just some soft music, brother, if you can play something. A friend of mine was in town from Germany. And I met him through an interesting way, through Uber. I met him through Uber. And um, he was on his way to preach at a church. And we began just to, to pray for each other and when I moved back from Korea, you know, I'm radical, guys. I, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to, to touch somebody for Christ. When I moved back from Korea, I used to live in South Korea. I graduated college, and I moved there as an English teacher, and I lived in Korea for four years. And I studied Asian culture. I've lived in Italy. I've lived in New York. And so when I moved back from Korea in 2017, I've been away from Dallas for such a long time that I had to get reacquainted with the city. And so I said, Lord, I had saved up all this money. I said, I'm going to take the whole year just to seek the Lord and find out what's next. And so I re-enrolled into my old college and I said, well, I don't want to just sit idle. I said, let me just get into an environment that allows me to pray and seek the Lord. And long story short, I said, Lord, I, I need to get reacquainted with Dallas and so the Lord said, just Uber, follow around in Uber. So I, I started doing that, and that's how I met him. And so he came in. He said, Justin, the Lord told me to bring my ministry here to America. He, the Lord told me to start a, a ministry called Shake the Nations. Married with two kids. He's from Paris, France, but he lives in Germany. And he's, an, he's a prophet, but he's, an, he's like a prophet evangelist. So his parents are missionaries. 
And I said, man, I believe, you know, I believe God. He said, Justin, God is my CEO and God is my CFO. Everyone say that. God is my CEO and my CFO. He said, this is what I live by. He said, I just obey. And he would tell me stories of how God would randomly speak to him and say, I need you to go drive three hours away and go to this church. And I need you to go pray. And he would go in and he would follow the instruction and to be this, this man of God or person that he didn't realize was there. And the Lord would give him a word for that person. I mean, random things, just going on the mountains and praying, God giving him visions. He came to America not too long ago, uh, a couple of months ago, and he was preaching in Washington. I'm sorry, Portland, Oregon. And there was a guy that was been praying for 14 months. He was like, Lord, I'm a businessman. I, I, who do you want me to be a blessing to? And he kept meeting pastors and passing the note. Lord said, nope, nope, nope. And so he heard that my friend was in town. He says, I want to drive four hours to meet you. Can I meet you for 20 minutes? So the guy came to the service. My friend is ministering. He's prophesying to people. And then he got to the guy, and the Lord told him to, to skip over him. And so he goes down the line. He's continuing to minister and so then He gets to the guy, and he prophesies and gives him a word. And he says, the Lord is showing me that you have an expensive car. The Lord is showing me that you have a key. I mean, he just starts sharing as the Holy Spirit will lead him. Long story short, he says, I want you to come to Germany with me. The guy flew to Germany with him back to Germany. The guy ended up giving his life to Jesus. Little did he know that this was a young, late 20s, early 30s, successful businessman. This guy makes three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a month. He says, the Lord has called me to take care of you. He says, I'm going to buy you a house. I'm going to buy you a car for your family and one for the ministry. And I'm going to pay you a salary. He called me two days ago, was going through a rough patch. He said, Justin, I'm here in town. He says, I'm in downtown Dallas. I'm at the, the Omni Hotel. He says, come, get in, let's swim together. Let's get in the jacuzzi hot tub together. I said, dude, I'm not in the mood to get in no jacuzzi hot tub, brother. It's, it's hot. He said, you need to relax, man. You need to relax. Come. So I go. We spend a day together. The guy... He says, you need some clothes. And so my friend said, okay, you know, I go to Ross, dress for less, right? He said, no, 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 you, you, you got to have the best. So now he's taking them to Gucci and all these other stores. And he, he said, Justin, he's buying me these things and this and that. And then he says, they went out to eat. And there's a steakhouse with the guy, Pastor Colin, he's on social media and he does the salt. He do, he do the salt like this. I don't know if you guys have seen him. What's his name? Salt Bay. Yeah, so he, he's very popular. And um, anyway, he's an Asian guy at the steakhouse here. But they had a gold, like 24 carat steak. Over $1,000. He ate it. And then they had like gold sushi, 24 carat gold sushi. So I'm looking at his phone saying, what? He said, bro, this is what I ate. He said, God is my CEO. God is my CFO. I just need to obey. What am I saying? If it's God's will, it's God's bill. If God wants to lead you somewhere, it is his responsibility to provide for you. But your heart got to be right. You got to be sold out. You got to be willing to say, Lord, if I'm stuck out here, I'm willing to, to look a fool and be stuck out here. Because you are all I have. I don't have a plan B, plan C. And I've come all the way to Dallas, Texas to let you know this morning that God wants to elevate you to a new place in your faith and connect your faith to your heart. And allowing your heart, thank you, Holy Spirit, to really come to the understanding. You know, sometimes we're so busy that we're not even aware of what's happening on the inside of us. Our affections are all over the place. We don't even have time to even recognize the real desire of the heart because we're always working. We're always doing this. We're always doing that. And God's like, listen, you're going the opposite direction of how I created you. 
God created you for fellowship, to be intimate with him. And what happens when we begin to put other things in the place of God, that spirit of harlotry, it kills and blocks intimacy with Jesus to where we experience God on the surface level or we only experience God on Sundays. Can I tell you, you can build an altar in your house. Come on, all you need is a space for you to kneel. It's all in your mind. And once your mind is placed in the right place, heaven will respond. Heaven will meet you in that place. And I don't know about you, but I need the presence of God every single day of my life. I'm a better man with the presence in my life. When I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm a better leader. I'm a better person. When I allow the presence in my life, you're a better husband. You're a better wife. You're a better worker when you allow that presence to come. Come on, stand on your feet this morning. And I want you to close your eyes tonight, this morning, sorry. And I want to ask you a question. What are you willing to do differently this morning? What is it that you will change for the sake of God to see something different in your life? God created this moment to see you in a different place. Don't miss your day of visitation because of resistance or things that are happening within your heart. God is saying this morning, he has brought you here this morning, not by accident. God knew I would be here and you would be here. He knew that this moment will be created. And I want to tell you, it is time to level up your faith, but first, your heart must be right. And if you're in this place and you have holes in your heart, or you're like that church in Ephesus, you're doing, 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 but you're, you have no heart in what you're doing. You come, but you come because you're obligated to come. You do because you do. It's the question, but it's not really the cry of your heart. God's saying, come this morning and give me that which you have in your heart and let me heal your heart that your faith may be at full capacity to see me move in your life. If that's you to, to this morning, I want you to come down. I want to pray with you for the healing of your heart, for the restoration of certain desires that may have died. Maybe you churched out. Maybe you've had so many things happen in your life. And God's saying, no more. Let me heal that deep area of your life. Come on, this is between you and God. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence right now in the name of Jesus. And we say every person on this altar, Lord, you have called them up here. And I pray, Lord, that you would begin to position their hearts right now to receive from the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, the presence of God. We invite the presence of God. I pray, Lord, right now for repentance, for those that need to repent, possibly for things in their life that they have not fully committed to God. And God is saying, turn, turn to me. Turn to me this morning. Stop trying to do it in your own strength. Stop trying to do it your own way. Will you give it to me? Will you let me in the driver's seat? And as you give it to me, I will begin to move like you've never seen before in your life. I will remove the pain from your past. Come on now. Some of you are holding on pain from your past. Maybe somebody didn't receive you and affirm you the way you needed to be affirmed. Maybe there's a root in your life that never got healed. Maybe something was stolen from you when you've been a, you should have been protected. Come on, let's deal with it this morning. This is part of your healing. 
Lord, I pray right now, do heart surgery right now. Heart surgery right now. Heal, heal hearts from the past. Parents, friendships, relatives, oh God, things that have happened in our past. We lay them down right now, Lord, and I declare healed hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, just begin to cry out before the Lord on what you need from him. Come on, allow him to heal those deep areas right now. Right now in Jesus' name. Come on, we are dealing with this from a sobriety, being sober right now. Be healed in your heart. Come on, release everything inside of you. Right now, forgive and release. That's it. Father, right now, we thank you, Holy Spirit. Will you bring healing to our heart? In the name of Jesus. Lord, we release the love of Jesus over her right now. Come on, let it come forth, church. Come on, you have to give it out. Don't hold on to it. Come on, if you have to scry, cry, scream, yell, God is healing. Give him that pain. Give him that situation where you are real when you come. When people see your face, they know that's the real you. You're not hiding behind a mask. We say remove masks. Remove masks. Lord, the, the, the courage to say, I don't want to be here. The courage to say, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. The courage to say, why I have to do it, Lord, and release right now in the name of Jesus. You will not be held in hostage. You will not be in bondage because of your ability, because you don't speak up. We say speak up right now in Jesus' name. Come forth in the name of Jesus. The healing of your soul right now in Jesus' name. Right now, every root we commanded to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Any root of bitterness, any root of unforgiveness, any root of rejection, we're commanded to come out now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we say that you are loved, you are affirmed, you have a father, you are not an abandoned stepchild. That God created you to love, God created you to be passionate, God created you to live freely in freedom. We say freedom right now, freedom, freedom. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Freedom right now, Holy Spirit. We speak freedom over your life. In the name of Jesus. Lord, will you touch your heart right now? Will you bring your understanding? Right now, in Jesus' name. surrender Lord in Jesus name we thank you Lord right now Father in Jesus name as God is healing your heart he's bringing new thoughts and ideas inside of you right now you will not live in ignorance you will not live in misunderstanding right now in the name of Jesus we break every stronghold of the enemy that will try to come and hinder you from going forth in your destiny and purpose. We break it right now. Every cycle, every cycle be broken right now in the name of Jesus. And we say be free by the power of the Holy Ghost right now. There it is. Just release it right now. Just release. We declare a release in your heart, a release right now. Every band be broken right now. Right now in Jesus' name. We declare freedom in your spirit. Freedom right now to walk in purpose. Right now in Jesus' name. Break, 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 break. Right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the presence of God. And now, Lord, we command faith to arise in your people. Come on, I, I want everyone just to put your hand over your belly if you're here at the altar. And I want to activate fresh faith inside of you that from this day forward, you will not live in limitation. 
You will not live in bondage. You will not live in your circumstance or your surroundings. You will only live from the realm and dimension of what God has declared through his word. I decree and declare right now the faith of God to be activated inside of you. I declare right now that you move in higher realms and dimensions of faith. Faith to move the mountains. Faith to speak forth as the oracles of the Holy Spirit. I command you to use the faith as Elijah, faith as Abraham, faith as the prophets of old. We activate faith, faith to dream, faith to imagine, faith to be all that God has called you to be. We command faith to arise, faith arise. We command every dead and dormant gift come alive now in the name of Jesus. We say right now, spirit of the living God, breathe, breathe breathe upon your people right now we thank you for business owners and dancers oh god educators father coming to the reality of their purpose of their calling father right now we break 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 every limitation in the name of jesus be free right now every cap be broken right now in the name of jesus we command every limitation in your mind come off right now in the name of jesus you are not your past you are not what your family been through you are greater you are a son of god you walk in purpose you are filled with power right now in the name of jesus break in jesus name come on lift your voice and begin to cry out god is breaking in right now breaking in into every area of your life breaking in right now into your heart to be everything that god has destined you to be to walk in the authority of jesus by the power of the holy ghost Lord, we command intercessors to awaken right now with the grace to pray, to pray and to intercede and to labor in love right 